Hello and welcome to this video. So, in this video we will look at processes which is possibly the most crucial part of operating systems. So, processes as we know is a program in execution. So, we will see today how operating systems manage processes. So, let us start with this now famous example of uh, printing hello world onto a screen. So, when compiled with gcc hello.c it creates an executable a dot out. So, when a dot out is executed a process is created. Part of this process will be in the RAM and it is identified by a virtual address map. So, the virtual address map is a sequence of contiguous mem addressable memory locations starting from 0 to a limit of max size. So, within this virtual address map we have various aspects of the process including the instructions, global and static data, heap as well as the stack. So, as we have seen in an earlier video the virtual address space or virtual address map of a process is divided into equally sized blocks. So, typically the size of each block is 4 kilobytes. Again there is uh, each process would also have a process page table in memory which maps each block of the process into a corresponding page frame. The RAM as we have seen is divided into page frames of size 4 KB similar to the block size. Uh, and these page frames contain the actual code and data of the process which is being executed. Now, we have uh, seen these in a previous video, but the question which we need to ask is where does the operating system or where does the kernel reside in this entire scheme. So, as we know the uh, kernel is an other software and has to be present in the RAM to execute. Thus, in most operating systems such as Linux as well as uh, in the operating systems which we are studying that is xv6, the kernel resides in the lower uh, part of the memory starting from uh, page frames 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay. Just like every other page frame, the kernel too is divided into page frames of equal size. Now, since we are using the uh, virtual addressing in the system, the page frames corresponding to the kernel are mapped into the virtual address space of the process. So, the kernel code and data are present above the max size and below a limit known as max limit. Now, again in the processes page table there are entries corresponding to this map. For instance, 7, 8, 9 and 10 correspond to the blocks that have the kernel code and data and the page table tells us that they are mapped into page frames 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, we could divide the, this particular virtual address space into two components. One is the user space which corresponds uh, to, the, uh, to this blue area uh, which contains the user processes, code, data and uh, other segments such as the stack and heap. Again, there is the kernel space which corresponds to the kernel code, data and other aspects of the kernel. So, the max size defines the boundary between the user space and the kernel space. A user program can only access any code or data present in this user space. The user program cannot access anything in the kernel space. On the other hand, the kernel can access code as well as data in both the kernel space as, as well as the user space. So, this prevents the uh, user space programs from maliciously modifying data or modifying kernel structures. So, another thing to notice is that there is a contiguous mapping between the kernel addresses in the virtual space of the process to the corresponding physical frames in which the kernel gets mapped into. For instance, uh, the, uh, the kernel blocks 7, 8, 9 and 10 get mapped into the contiguous page frames 1, 
2, 3 and 4. So, why is this contiguous mapping actually used? So, one most important aspect is that given this contiguous mapping, it is easy for the kernel to, uh, to make conversions from virtual address to physical address and vice versa. For instance, to convert from virtual address in the kernel space to the corresponding physical address in the page frames of the kernel, a simple subtraction by max size would do the trick. For instance, in xv6 where the max size is defined as 0x8000000, a virtual address of 0x8012434 can be converted to the corresponding physical address by subtracting the max size. So, the physical address would be simply written as 0x00124345. Similarly, a physical address corresponding uh, in the kernel code and uh, data in the kernel page frames can be, can be converted to the corresponding virtual address uh, in, the in the kernel space by adding max size. For example, in this case, the physical address 0x0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 5 can be converted to the corresponding virtual address in the kernel space by adding this max size to get 0x80, 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 5. So, what happens when we have multiple processes in the system, the kernel space is mapped identically in all virtual address spaces of every process. For instance, above max size to be and below max limit, the kernel space is present in all processes. Similarly, the page table in each process also has an identical mapping between the kernel page tables and the corresponding page frames that the kernel occupies. As can be seen in these few entries as well as these few entries. Now, one thing to be noticed is that although the virtual address space of each process has different entries for the kernel, however, all processes eventually map their kernel space into the same page frames in the RAM. So, what this means is that we, we have just a single copy of the kernel present in the RAM. However, there can be multiple identical entries in each process's page table corresponding to the kernel code and data. Now that we have seen where the kernel exists in the RAM as well as where it gets mapped to in the virtual address space of each process, now we will look at what metadata the kernel has corresponding to each process that runs in the system. So, each process in the system has three metadata known as the process control block, a kernel stack for that user process and the, the corresponding page table for that user process. So, each process that runs in the system will have these three blocks that is unique for that process. So, we have already seen that page tables map the, the virtual addressable space of that user process to the corresponding page frames uh, that the process occupies. Now, we will look at the other two metadata. So, we have learnt that corresponding to each process, there, there are uh, various segments and one important segment is the stack of the process. So, this process stack uh, present in the user space would have information such as the local variables and also information about function calls. So, this we will now call as the user space stack. In addition to the user space stack, each process will also have something known as the kernel uh, space stack or the kernel stack for that process. So, this uh, kernel stack is used when the kernel executes in the context of a process. For instance, uh, when the process executes a system call, it uh, results in the kernel, uh, uh, some kernel code uh, executing and this kernel code would use the kernel stack for its local variables as well as function calls. Also, this kernel stack is used for many other important aspects such as to store the context of a process 
as well as uh, to store uh, okay. In addition to uh, the standard use of the stack uh, such as for local and auto variables as well as for function calls, the kernel stacks plays a crucial role in storing the context of a process which would allow the process to restart after periods of time. So, why do we have two separate stacks? Why do we have a user stack for the process as well as the kernel stack? The advantage that we achieve is that the kernel can execute even if the user stack is corrupted. So, attacks that target the stack such as buffer overflow attack will not affect the kernel in such a case. So, let us look uh, at some of the important components in the PCB. So, this particular structure is taken from the XP6 operating systems uh, PCB which we which is defined as truck proc. So, some of the important elements or uh, aspects of this particular structure is uh, uh, SZ which is the size of the process memory, uh, PGDIR which is a pointer to the page directory uh, for the process, K stack which is a pointer to the kernel st stack uh, which we have defined a few slides earlier and there are other aspects such as the a list of files that are opened by the process, the current working directory of the process and the executable name for instance a dot out in our example. So, we will look at some of these other parameters in the forthcoming slides. So, uh, an important entry in the PCB uh, corresponding to each process is the PID or process identifier. So, this is an identifier for the process uh, essentially defined as an integer and each process would have a unique PID. So, typically uh, it uh, the number would be incremented sequentially in such a manner that uh, when a process is created it gets a unique number. And other very important aspect uh, in, in the PCB is the state of the process. So, from the time a process is created to the time it exits it moves through several states such as the new, ready, block state or running state. The XV6 uh, calls these states by different names such as the new is called the embryo uh, which means that a new process is currently being created while uh, ready is known as the runnable which means it is ready to run uh, while the sleeping is known as the block state and uh, essentially block for an IO. So, how and when does a process actually go from one state to another? So, when a new process is created it is initially in the state known as new. When it is ready to run the state is moved to what is known as the ready state and when it finally runs on the processor it gets shifted to the running state. After running for a while the process gets preempted from the processor in order to allow other processes to run and in such a case it goes back from the running state to the ready state. Now, suppose during the execution of the process there is some IO operation that is required. For instance, the process could call uh, invoke a scanf which requires the user to enter something through the keyboard. In such a case, the process would be moved from a running state to a block state. So, the process will remain in the block state until the event occurs for instance when the user enters something through the keyboard. So, when this event occurs the process moves from the block state back to the ready state and this process of uh, moving from one state to another from ready to running from running to uh, back to ready or from running to blocked and then ready. Uh, keeps going on through the entire life cycle of the process. Uh, at the end when the process exits or gets terminated it goes to uh, what is known as the exit uh, an exit state which is not shown in this diagram. So, uh, you could actually look up uh, the xp6 code proc.h and uh, which will give you more information about 
the various states. So, what is this ready state? Operating systems maintain a queue of processes which are all in the ready state. When an event such as a timer interrupt occurs, a module within the operating system known as the CPU scheduler gets triggered. Okay, this CPU scheduler then uh, scans through these the queue of ready processes and selects one uh, which then gets executed in the, pro, uh, in the processor. This selected process then changes its state from ready to running. The, the, the running process would continue to run until the next timer interrupt occurs uh, and the entire cycle repeats itself. Another entry in the PCB are pointers to what is known as the trap frame and context. So, uh, these trap frame as well as context are part of the kernel stack and as uh, seen uh, in this figure, they have a lot of information about the current state of the running process. For instance, it would have the, uh, it would save the stack segment, the uh, stack pointer, the flags register, the code segment, instruction pointer and so on. So, this particular trap frame and context is used when a process is restarted after a context switch. So, how are these various uh, PCBs stored in XV6? So, in XV6, uh, a structure known as P table is defined. So, this structure has an array of struct procs. So, remember that struct procs is actually the PCB structure in XV6. So, uh, the array has n proc entries where n proc is defined as 64. So, each process that gets created in XP6 will have an entry in this particular array. So, you could have more information about this particular structure in uh, look by looking at uh, the XP6 code proc.c and uh, the structure p table. Also, params.h uh, is a file in XP6 which defines what n proc is. So, this gives us a brief introduction to how processes are managed in the operating system. In the next video, we will look at how a process cre gets created, uh, executes and exits from the system. Thank you.